Hi folks, Steve here and today I'm going to show you one of the ways that I like to paint rust. And um, This is a really simple way and it basically just uses two paints. So let's crack on. So for this video I'm going to be showing you this technique using this um, old Metal Chaos Warrior from Ralph Arthur which is a, it's a really nice sculpt but it's really fun to paint. And I'm going to start off by just getting a metallic base coat on, just a, a quick silver. Um, it doesn't really matter what colour this is, um, this is uh, it's a dark chainmail colour. If you only, only have one silver then um, you can just add a little bit of black to your silver to darken it down. Um, and then for highlights you can add a little bit of white to your silver to, to lighten it up. Um, it's really uh, it's not that big a deal if you've got a limited range of paints. Um, so yeah you can see this is quite a, quite a dark metallic colour which is fine, we just need something on the base coat for us then to put the, the paints that we'll be painting the rust with on top. Um, like I said in the intro, we're just going to be using basically two paints to create this effect. So it's really simple, it's nice and easy, um, and I think it's quite a satisfying way of painting rust. So we'll just be basically using a uh, dark brown and an orange. Um, again, it doesn't matter what brown and what orange you use, it's just whatever you happen to have. The paints that I'm going to be using are a Vallejo model colour called Wood Grain, which is quite a dark, nice, sort of semi-transparent brown, and uh, an orange called Flame Orange from uh, Coat the Arms. Uh, but again, really doesn't matter. You use which paints you've got, use whichever paints that you want. I've got a little bit of, the, of each paint on my wet palette, and I'm going to go to the Wood Grain first. So this is the the darker brown, the dark brown, and I'm using it pretty thin as you can see there um, so it's, it's more or less a glaze there's more water than paint going on and I'm starting down at the the bottom of the of the blade where the rust would be most concentrated and then sort of working my way up and I'm not doing a, a distinct pattern I'm not doing full coverage like sweeping big sweeping motions of a brush it's um, I'm almost letting my hand just do these little random patterns so there's some little bits of dots sometimes I'm pulling a line here or there and um, making it really quite random um, as I move the model a little bit and you can you can sort of see um, the brown against the, the reflection of the, of the metallic paint and so you can see it's quite a haphazard pattern that's going on there there's no um, there's no real rhyme or reason to it and so I'm going to move around the mini doing exactly the same thing and I'll keep going back and forth as well so the idea of this is the paint is, is really quite thin so it'll dry very quickly and then leave this basically this sort of brown coffee like staining and then I'll go back and forth and so we're going to get patches of it that are darker, patches of it that are lighter and there's still going to be quite a bit of areas especially around the edges of the blade where you can still see the metallic paint underneath um, and that's absolutely fine that's what we want this kind of patchy approach to it. Now here we have that first pass of the wood grain paint as dried so you can see that um, really um, haphazard pattern going on there and I'm going to go back now exactly the same again still really dilute and I'm going to go and hit some of the areas again where there's already dark paint, uh, brown paint to, to darken it up and um, just keep into the same kind of random pattern I don't want it to look too um, I don't want it to look like there's too much thought behind it. The aim here is purely just to, to reinforce some of those darker areas and just to, to bring the colour out a bit more. So now we're going to move on to the orange paint and same as before um, I'm not going to do any big deliberate strokes I'm using small little motions and um, what I want to do at this point is to, to build up some areas and keep it looking nice and random um, but we want some of that, the, the newer orange rust, to, to be dotted about the place. Um, again, it's still quite thin as well, so this is not really thick, heavy coats of paint. And what I'm also going to try and do um, is to use the, the higher value of the orange paint to give us an idea of uh, or an impression of highlights. So you can see at the, the bottom of the blade where you've got those... Uh, the kind of triangular little teeth so I focused a little bit more of the orange on the, the top that part there just so it, uh, it stands out a bit more compared to the to the darker brown underneath um, and that's one of the things that I'll do in a, just in a general way I'm not really going to use the, the orange to, to highlight the weapon but I'm going to 
just by focusing it a little bit more on some of the areas that are, are higher or more exposed it will give that general impression so there will be a higher value paint at those points so it's um, to your mind it kind of reads like a highlight even though we're not technically highlighting it with that paint um, and so you can see on this side again it's going on it's really subtle when I first start it um, and again we're working with really thin dilutions of paint so we can build this gradually so it's a lot less um, it's a lot so it's a lot uh, easier to avoid making a mistake um, because you're just building up gradually so you're not going on with a big thick blodge of paint and uh, I'm not a, by any means a, an expert when it comes to painting but I've been trying to improve constantly and I think one of the biggest things that's really helped me is uh, working with different dilutions of paint and so I'd really recommend experimenting with your paints, diluting them, using them really, really thin. Like you always hear people saying about, you know, thin your paints or use too thin coats, things like that. And one of the things that I've noticed with really, really good high level painters is they're not afraid to really, really, really thin down the paint till it's practically just slightly coloured water um, and just work at such a, such a gradual scale that you have this really high level of control over what you're doing. Um, I'm not saying this is what I'm doing here because I'm, I'm not, I've got it fairly diluted um, but probably not to, to that same kind of extent but um, it is a really good way of working because you can just build something so gradually and if you like what you see you can keep doing it, you can add a bit more, you can add a bit more, you can add a bit more um, you're not going to get to the point where suddenly it's way too much because you're using uh, thick layers of paint Now I said we were only using two paints for this and that's technically correct. This next step is uh, it's an optional step. I'm going to use uh, a purple wash. So for this, like you can see, I'm using uh, army paint as purple tone, but you can use any purple wash that you have. If you've got the, the Games Workshop one, the, the Nagraf Nightshade or something like that. Or you could even just use a, a highly diluted um, purple paint and that would work in exactly the same way. Um, and what I'm doing here, um, I've diluted the wash as well, so I'm not using this straight. I've put this onto my um, wet palette just to get a bit more moisture in. And I'm just using this to, um, to kind of modulate the colour. So this is going to uh, reinforce some of the darker areas. So where it goes over the brown or where it goes over the orange, it's going to, going to um, enrich that colour a little bit. Um, give us a bit of variation so focusing largely on the the sort of the lower and the bottom ends but also going up sort of the center of the blade as well um, and it just creates a, a very nice little variation in the color it reacts very nicely to the to the brown and to the orange because we're kind of on the, the red spectrum I suppose you could say I'm not very not very big up on my color theory that's something that I need to to work on but uh, yeah, just using some, some thin down purple wash just to, to help change that colour a little, a little bit. And in the same way as we were doing with the, the brown and the orange paints before, because I'm using the purple quite thin, I can go back and forwards with it as well. So once the, the first application of it has dried, I can go in again with a bit more of that purple ink, um, sorry, purple wash, and um, just reinforce it in certain areas as well um, to again help sort of build up that, that variation that we're doing there. So here's what we have after that step and um, you can see when I tilt it so we've got some nice variation in the, the colours of the, the browns and the orange there with the, the purples done its job and um, you can still see there's a bit of reflection from the metallic base coat that we did so that's looking really nice now I think and uh, you could leave it at that but we're going to do a couple more steps um, at this point I'm going to go back to the orange again and we're just going to push some of that, that brighter rust a little bit and um, again you can see on my thumb there it's, it's still really quite thin um, and so I'm going to go back in same as before uh, very gently and um, very deliberately this time just deciding which which areas that I want to just add uh, a little bit more um, you can see as well where we've got sort of the the edge before where the, the bevel of the, of the blade itself starts just um, bringing it along there again like I was talking about earlier uh, using it almost like we would a highlight um, 
I suppose basically we are doing it as a, as a highlight, there's no point in saying almost, but yeah, run it along, along these bits just to, to make those bits stand out uh, a little more so along the edges there, the points, things like that, um, and that will just help bring it out and make it stand out a little bit. So now it's time to just do some finishing touches. So what I've got here is a, um, a metallic silver paint that's a, a step up from the chain mail that I used originally. So I think this is plate mail from, from Army Painter. So this is just a, a brighter silver. Um, like I said earlier, if you, if you only have the one silver, you can just add a little bit of white into it. And that, that will bring it up a little bit. You can quite easily mix uh, other acrylic colours into metallic paints and they'll take them quite well. Um, what I'm doing here, um, first quite quite gently, I've only got a little bit of paint on my brush and uh, I'm just going in making a, a few little scratches and just um, really carefully just defining some of the some of the edges. I'm not going in too heavy, it's not going to be a very thick edge highlight, um, just a gentle one just to, to give us the idea of the light catching some of the areas of the blade that are slightly less corroded. So. When um, when you've got rusty weapons or rusty metal of any kind, when it when it comes into contact with something, when you strike a surface with it, some of that rust can break off and expose little chips of, of the the less rusted metal underneath. And so that's just the the kind of effects that I'm looking to go for at the moment. So just doing that and build it up nice and gently. And there you have it, that's pretty much the, the end of that process. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this little video and um, maybe you find a bit of use out of it. Uh, like I said, I think it's uh, it's really good practice to, to get into using uh, different dilutions of paint, especially really, really taking it down to a, a glaze level and just seeing what kind of effects that you can get because paint behaves in a, in a very different way when it's incredibly diluted and you can get some really nice results from it just by building things up gently in, in multiple passes. Um, and so that's uh, that's pretty much it for now. So thanks very much for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments. Um, if you have your own way of painting rust as well, then uh, please share that with me. Thanks very much. Bye for now.